I had done a show with Rick and um, Mike Greenberg, the producer, his producer, um, called Legend. Mm -hmm. And um, and then uh, and then Stargate happened for him. And uh, uh, so I got called, you know, it, it was really more of a f friendly thing rather than perhaps, you know, a, a character that they just had to find somebody to to um, to uh, act, to perform. So it was mostly through that. OK, OK. And what did you um what did you make of this guy, this this uh, this politician, government bureaucrat slash military? Who was who was Frank Simmons on the page? Well, I mean, he was <laughs> Frank Simmons was sort of a jerk. <laughs> um, um, I have less uh, connection with that character simply because. You know, I think I only played it once or twi twice, twice, two or three times. Um, um, my connection was really my friendship with uh, with Mike Greenberg and 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 uh, and Rick. Um, this was it, I just it, it, either I didn't really you know do much with it the character, but my fault or the character didn't have a lot going on so that there wasn't a lot for me to um jump in on with that so it's not really but something that i have spent much time thinking about um over the years i mean i probably would not be thinking very much about um, star trek if, if it weren't for the fact that that people keep on asking about it over and over again which i'm happy to answer them and you know and obviously that performance in that show has become um well, dare i use the word well let's just say iconic or legendary or, or at least um it's 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 something that a lot of people ask me about um um colonel simmons is not mm -hmm. that's fair um i can tell you though from uh from the stargate circles though that it's it was it was a big deal to have you on uh the show and um you know that and this is certainly true with with star trek and 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 pr well pretty much any kind of form of entertainment your 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 good guys are only as good as your villains are vile you know Absolutely. And I mean, and that's one of the things that makes playing villains fun. And that is especially, especially if you consider that they are not villains, but that they are heroes, at least in their own mind, mm -hmm. they are heroes. Um, even the most villainous of people don't start the, the morning with looking in the mirror and say, saying, how, how horrible can I be today? Um, they always have a point of view and something that they want to achieve where we as reasonable people might consider that to be, um, not worthy of, uh, uh but, um, they don't start out by wanting to be villainous. What was it like working with Rick from legend to well, I had worked with Rick. Rick is is um, is a wonderful actor, and he is a, he's a, he's a consummate. Um, he really understands the camera, so he understands what's being shot and what's being you know stuff like that. Because he and Mike would spend well, I mean, countless hours in the editing room, and that's something that you just don't get until you 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 have that opportunity uh he got that opportunity because of macgyver and then was able to take that and begin to to apply it so um when i met him with legend it became apparent really early on i mean almost immediately that he really knew his business mm -hmm. Did you notice um, any similarities between how uh, 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 Stargate was done compared to your to your work on Star Trek? Heavy on the visual effects, you know. Uh, we're talking uh, at, at the time that you entered a series that was in its like fifth season. Were there any similarities between the two in terms of production value or any, any or the the way things ran? When you say I entered a series in the fifth season, which which series? Stargate SG One. Stargate was SG One. Um, um 
It was much looser. The shooting, the, the shooting environment was much looser in SG one. Okay. Um, and I think that that's very much a, uh, um, uh, a reflection of who uh, Rick is and who Mike Greenberg is. Um, you know, Star Trek, we could not improvise at all, at all. We just, we just couldn't. Uh, for for um, uh, um, Picard, um, it's yet again a different thing, you know, Picard, Star Trek, Picard, because um, there they are using, you know, legacy actors now who we know, we know these characters pretty well. And they've been very, very nice in being able to say, well, what do you think? And do you think that, you know, and, you know, could I add a word here? And, you know, might I, you know, improvise a phrase here? And they go, yes, of course, and stuff like that. That was not the case in Star Trek, uh, but it was the case in, um, in um, Stargate. Um, uh, so th that was certainly a, a huge difference in shooting styles. I would imagine so. Yeah, the 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 Star Trek sets; the, those stories are notorious for like if you wanted to change a word, it had to run up the the flagpole, and often it had to run up the flagpole. Yeah. And you might have, as I did, you know, long, complicated speeches, and then uh -huh. you know you'd finish, and you thought that you had done a good job, and uh, they would turn to the script supervisor and simply say, "Well, did he did he say all the words?" And then. And then, you know, the group supervisor would say, you know, in, in, in extreme cases, well, he said was not as opposed to wasn't. And then they'd have to decide whether they were going to shoot it again. And you're kind of oh going, God. guys, this really turns the turns the exercise into recitation mm -hmm. and not acting. Um, you know, we we have very little time with the material. It isn't as if we have done this as a play where this is the third week of saying the same stuff. Um, you know, you're just kind of, a, so people who are particularly advantaged by that type of environment, um, Kate Mulgrew has almost a photographic memory. Uh, um, um, Patrick, uh, very good uh, with memoriz memorizing, you know, I, I'm, I was just the opposite. I, I, I'm very dyslexic. And so I would take, take me a week to learn my stuff. Ah, yeah, I can understand my, my mother is dyslexic as well. And you know, that's it's things that you don't, you know, that there's things that you can't see on the surface that people have to deal with that, you know, it's sure it's not easy, you know, to, to right. sit, sit with your mother in a in a in a restaurant and and help her read the menu sometimes, you know, but you'd never know. Sure, never because know. if you don't have any phonetic, if you weren't taught in my case, uh, not only uh, was I dyslexic, but I was taught. I mean, this is all before they knew what mm -hmm. dyslexia was. Nobody said the word dyslexia. Right. They would say, you know, you're slow or you know, stupid or, or, or lazy. Um, but if, if, if me certainly, and maybe your mother was then not taught, um, to read phonetically, then you are, you are completely at sea. Yeah. 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 I'm thankful for, for smartphones now that you can press the audio button and tell it what you want. Because <laughs> yes. it's made her life right. so much easier. Yes, right, right. I mean, yeah, I write quite a bit, and there's nothing better than to have, uh, you know, spell check and all that type of stuff. <laughs> That's yeah. exactly right. Thanks for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. You can find the full live stream shows on our YouTube channel or visit dialthegate.com for the complete schedule. See you on the other side.